Hannity, America is in mourning after yesterday's tragic shooting at a community college in Oregon. Now tonight, much is still unknown about the deranged gunman who murdered nine people cold blood. However, according to multiple accounts, the shooter targeted his victims because of their Christian faith. Now, unfortunately, in the moments following the shooting, after knowing few details about yesterday's tra tragedy, the president decided to turn political and lecture America once again about gun control. Watch this. It cannot be this easy for somebody who wants to inflict harm on other people to get his or her hands on a gun. Somebody somewhere will comment and say, Obama politicized this issue. Well, this is something we should politicize. Without knowing a thing, he rushes to politicize and is proud of it. Here with Reaction 2016, Republican presidential candidate, former Arkansas Governor Mike uh, Huckabee, as well as governor. I would argue in a presidency with many rhetorical low points, you know, social Darwinism, uh, Republicans want dirty air and water, or Vice President Biden, they're going to put you all back in chains, uh, throwing granny over the cliff, uh, all of those things. This is a new low, even for this president to me. Uh, without knowing a thing, without knowing the names of the victims even at the time. What is your reaction to that? Well, it was very offensive, Sean, because we didn't know any of the details. We later found out that he was targeting Christians. But at that moment, he once again goes out and says that we need to change the laws. And I would just simply say, Mr. President, you, you talk about this being the 15th time. Could you tell us what law you would change that would have prevented this? Because every time he makes a proposal for a law, the clear reality is it would not have prevented it. I'll tell you what stopped that shooter, Sean. What stopped that shooter was the police officer who <laughs> showed up with a gun. That stopped the shooter. It, it seems, Governor, that we that these schools, these gun-free zones that we have, have now we, they have sitting targets, groups of children in some cases. Why is it such a bad idea to use retired policemen that are armed and put them in our schools and let everybody know that they're there? And then this way, they, there's at least some level of defense for those innocent kids that are on campus. Isn't that a far better solution? Wouldn't that stop some of these murders? If it didn't stop them from starting, it certainly would keep them from having minutes, 10, 15 minutes of uninterrupted murder. And one of the things about this particular college, about a year ago, they had this very discussion. Would they arm the one security officer that would be on the campus? And they chose not to. So they have a security officer. He's unarmed. That is, uh, you know, a decision that they made. I, I think it probably, maybe in retrospect, I would like to think that they would say it wasn't the best decision. Would that have stopped the shooter from showing up? I don't know. But it may have kept him from killing as many people. And maybe if the shooter knew that there were going to be uh, a confrontation with a guard, with a gun, he might not have done it. And, and, and Sean, I, I got to just really hit home. I think one of the reasons when the president keeps talking about we need to do something, he's always wanting to tinker with the Second Amendment. I wonder would he want to tinker with the First Amendment? Because I'm convinced since this shooter said that he did this because he wanted to be famous, maybe the sheriff was right. I agree with him. Let's not give this guy fame. Let's not put his picture up. Let's don't give his name out. Let's let him be anonymous. Let's just call him the cowardly murderer. Let's call him the animal. Let's call him the savage. But let's not uh, honor him by giving him publicity. What because I think that encourages yeah. other crazy people to do it. As a, as a pastor, a former pastor, I don't, I'm not sure if he's still uh, or, or preaching uh, governor. But, but it's you know, been about 25 years, you know, since I. Uh, okay, well, but you know what I mean. Um, yeah, I sure. think there's something to glean from, are you a Christian? Stand up. He shoots them in the head. You're going to see God in a second. Other people that don't answer, he shoot, shoots them in the leg. Or they say another religion. What do you take from that? I take it that it's a person who hates uh, Christianity, a person who hates those whose faith gives them peace and tranquility that he doesn't have. Uh, we saw the same kind of thing at the Charleston shooting where a person specifically targets people in a church 
It wasn't just a random gathering of some uh, garden club. It was a church. In this case, he specifically called out. He didn't say, are you a Boy Scout? He didn't call out and say, do you belong, uh, you know, to s some particular organization like the Tea Party. He f specifically said, are you a Christian? And if they said yes, they were shot in the head. It's what, clearly a hate crime. A analyze for me the president's compulsion. It seems that it's an impulse for him. Something happens, he wants the race to politicize it. I, I gave you the examples. Republicans are social Darwinists. They put their party above their country. Uh, he goes out of his way uh, to pit Americans against Americans. We see it every election cycle. Um, Republicans don't care about kids with Down syndrome. They don't care about the elderly. They want to poison the air and water. We're going to put you all back in chains, as Biden says. That, to me, is like he's divided the whole country. Isn't this the opposite of what he said he wanted to do when he was first running for president? Absolutely, it's the opposite. This is a president that could have been the most conciliatory president in our lifetime, if not the country's history. Instead, he has chosen to make everything all about us versus them. And the result is we've never been so polarized, so divided as we are right now. I think when a tragedy happens, the president's primary job it is not to try to analyze it, but to try to bring some presence, some comfort, uh, some sense of human perspective to it. And we saw that. Look, Bill Clinton was able to do that. A good Ronald point. Reagan was able to do that. George Bush was able to do that. This president has not been able to simply leave the politics out of it and make it about the country and about the people who were adversely affected and the families left behind us to, to grieve and survive. Before the names were known or the bodies were even cold, he's advancing an agenda. Very sad.